The popularity of podcasts has increased exponentially over the last few years, and for good reason. They're a great way for consumers to consume content. They're a great way for people to hear about their favorite thing, about something that they're really involved in. But also for creators, they're a great way to add extra revenue. They're a great way for people to add another string to their bow. But podcasts need to sound a certain way. They need to sound polished. They need to sound produced. Well, here I'm going to show you how you can get a great professional sounding podcast and give you this template completely for free in Logic Pro to get this sound for yourself. Let's check it out. So first of all, I'm actually just going to play you this before any processing takes place. And then afterwards, we're going to discuss why I'm doing what I'm doing and how we can make our lives a little bit easier. With all of this, Mike, can the squadron still leave in time to catch the French? I wonder. I wonder too, Ian. With all of this, Mike, can the squadron still leave in time to catch the French? I wonder. I wonder too, Ian. There's a couple of processes that I'm always doing to podcasts, to voices, to kind of increase the intelligibility, to increase that almost radio-ready kind of sound, and that's EQ and compression. Now, this podcast has already been edited, so I've already taken out all the dead air, all the stops, any mistakes that may have occurred. If you want to see how you can do that and how you can do it fast with some extra tricks, then you can check it out just at the top now. But this is really about how you can get that sound, how we can create that familiar, almost bass heavy kind of sound and this is going to be different for every voice but I'll show you how I work with different people's voices to get the best out of them. So the first process that I'm always applying is going to be an EQ. I'm going to have a compressor as well but this EQ is going to be before the compressor and I'll show you why. So there's some fairly liberal use of EQ here to get it up to that kind of radio ready sound. I'm adding a, a low end boost, a fairly considerable boost, 8.5 dB in this low end. Now, I want to increase the richness of the voice. So this 134 hertz may not be exactly where you want it to be, but this is a good boost that I tend to like. And then I can sweep it around depending on the certain person's voice. So let's just take this off and then bring it back on again. With all of this, Mike, can the squadron still leave in time? It's just that richness of this particular person's voice. And if I sweep this around, you'll hear how that changes, how we can add more in the, the lower bass frequencies or in the slightly upper bass frequencies. With all of this, Mike, can the squadron still leave in time? So round there, it kind of goes away because as you can see, there's not much content around that area in this person's voice. With all of this, Mike, can the squadron still leave in time? So when we get to this area, 180, 175, this is where the almost kind of blobby nature comes in. So I'm typically increasing the low end below that before we get to around 200 hertz. And I'm actually creating a cut around that area as well. So let's bring this one back to where it was, 134. And then after that low end boost, I'm actually applying a cut in the, the low mid area because with this boost in the bottom end, you can often add some kind of blobbiness, as I say, that isn't really pleasing to the ear and that can get a little bit confusing for the listener. So I'm just taking out some of the 230 area here by around 6 dB. Let's hear it with and then without. With all of this, Mike, can the squadron still leave in time? It's just notching out a small amount. And you'll see from the curve, this is perhaps a little bit confusing because I'm adding this boost, which is spreading all the way over here. And then the cut, although I'm taking out 6 dB, the actual curve is only taking out a very small amount. And this is by design because I originally took out quite a considerable amount of that area, but I found that it was just lacking. It was just taking away a little bit too much of that bottom end. So I found that just by listening and bringing that back up a little bit, I was taking out just the touch and it was just clearing up the voice just as much as I needed it to. So in the template you can download, these frequencies are kind of set and you can just bring this up or bring this down. So think of this one as the kind of body. And then the next one is the, the woofiness that you might want to bring out. And then above that, I'm just adding a slight amount of air. This is just adding a little bit to the S's, just a little bit to the overall intelligibility of the sound and just making it just a little bit clearer. It's only a 3 dB boost. It's not as crazy as it was in the bottom end. It's just adding a small amount of brightness. So let's go before and after. With all of this, Mike, can the squadron still leave in time to it's just adding a slight amount of air. Now, with this, sometimes you'll need to add a de because you want the overall sound to be a little bit brighter, but sometimes the S's can get just a little bit too s -y. but that's your call. That's down to the voice that you're actually working on at the time. 
So this is kind of my standard setup for a voiceover or a podcast. You'll see how there's two people in this podcast. And if I go to the second one, we've got a similar thing going on, but we're kind of working in different frequencies. This guy's voice is a little bit lower. So I'm actually increasing at 128 instead of 134. It's just that small amount lower, but it's just really making the difference and adding to the richness of this particular person's voice. And you'll see that there's similar stuff going on here, but depending on the microphone they're using, depending on the room, they're recording in you may get a bit more top end in one person's voice or a bit more bottom end so these aren't always just set and forget these are things that you have to manipulate as you go on in this particular person's voice i took out again some of that kind of low mid area a touch higher than before and i felt like it was getting a little bit kind of aggressive in the mid range i've not added anything in the top end because this person's voice didn't need it but it was getting a little bit just too honky in the mid range let's take a listen to this and see what a mid cut can do back we're with steven it's you know several days after his journey as you mentioned just back, smooths it out steven it's you know several days after his journey just smoothing it out a little bit especially when someone gets quite animated in their speech you can occasionally get just a little bit too much aggression into the microphone and that's exactly what this particular cut is dealing with now onto compression i find the compression is a really integral part of podcast processing because you want to level out the sound if someone's listening in their headphones if they're listening on car speakers perhaps they don't want the volume to be all over the place you need to level that sound out and that's exactly what a compressor is going to be doing it's going to be taking the the loud sections of the voice and bringing them down slightly and then by design it's also bringing up the slightly quieter sections so i'm going to show you how i approach compression and you'll see in the template that this is something that you can kind of just bring one knob down and have more or less compression. So in Logic, I tend to use this vintage Opto compressor. It's quite a slow compressor, and by that, it's kind of quite natural as well. It doesn't clamp down on transients too much. It just, just grabs them and just brings things down in a kind of gentle way. Now, this is going to be the control that you can alter to have more or less compression, but let's just discuss what the other parameters are doing and why they're doing it. So my ratio is at around three to one. I don't want to go too crazy. I don't want to bring down too many peaks. I just want to level the whole thing off. If I were to bring this up, then it would mean that the, the peaks that pass this threshold would get clamped down on too much. So I find that three to one is kind of a good area to sit at. My attack, I've got relatively fast. It's not like lightning quick. It's not straight away. There's allowing a little bit to kind of get through just in the first instance, but the release is quite quick as well. That means that we're not compressing for a long period. Remember, we're just aiming to bring down the peaks. We're not doing any real kind of tonal shaping with this. We're just aiming to bring down those loud sections. So once it's compressed, I want it to return to the non-compressed sound pretty quickly afterwards. So that release is fairly swift. And you'll see if I just go to the, the graph kind of display here, let's just see how much compression is being applied. You'll see that this is a relatively kind of dynamic part. There's some pretty loud bits here and some quieter sections here. With all of this, Mike, can the squadron still leave in time? So we're getting a decent amount of gain reduction, maybe 5 dB gain reduction, but it's overall just leveling the thing out. Let's listen before compression and afterwards and just hear how it's making everything sound a bit more uniform. With all of this, Mike, can the squadron still leave in time to catch the French? With all of this, Mike, can the squadron still leave in time to catch the French? So with that, when it's saying uh, the squadron, that bit is kind of a little bit too quiet in the uncompressed version, but in relative terms, it's actually the fact that the other sections are too loud. So we're bringing down the louder sections, and then in relative terms, that squadron section is kind of a little bit louder because we're making the dynamic difference slightly less. One more time without and then with. With all of this, Mike, can the squadron still leave in time? With all of this, Mike, can the squadron still leave in time to catch the friend? So it's about making that difference less. It's about making everything a touch smoother. If I want to achieve more compression, then I can grab this threshold knob and I can just bring this down. With all of this, Mike, can the squadron still leave in time? But that's a little bit too much. So if we wanted a bit less, we can then just bring that up. With all of this, Mike, can the squadron still leave in time to catch the friend? With all of this, Mike, can the squadron still leave in time to catch the friend? 
So this threshold is going to be dependent on how loud your audio actually is in the first place. And that's why I say that it's kind of a one knob to get more or less. You're going to need to bring this down or up just to get that kind of compression amount that you're after. You don't want too much or too little, but your ears are going to be able to tell you this. So bringing this down is going to achieve more compression. Bringing it up is going to achieve less. If you've got a really loud signal in the first place, you're going to want to bring this up so that not too much is passing the threshold. So a couple of things that I like to apply to the, the master chain, the main stereo output, just to achieve the loudest that I'm looking for. And I kind of do this in a relatively simple way, but one that is quite effective for me. So you'll see I've got the compressor again, and then I've got a loudness meter. So the loudness meter is about achieving the recommended loudness for podcasts. Now for me, I'm always aiming for around minus 20 LUFS. That's loudness units full scale. We're not going to go too much into that now, but I'm sure you've seen that when you're uploading your podcast. This is a, an average kind of level over the span of time. And this just means that all your podcasts, if they're achieving this same LUFS level, then the, the perceived loudness of the listener and their ear is going to perceive this as being as loud as a Another podcast which is also minus 20 LUFS. So you'll see if I bring this up then we just press play. With all of this Mike, can the squadron still leave in time to catch the French? I wonder. So we're actually hitting exactly minus 20 at the point that I stopped this but you'll realize pretty soon that this is not just an instantaneous thing this is over the period the entire duration of the podcast so i want to be checking this periodically and just making sure that overall the whole thing is kind of hitting that minus 20 point and it's about loudness it's about volume it's about how loud is this podcast in general well if the whole thing is just a little bit quiet then typically i personally don't want to go to all my faders and just bring everything up or bring everything down and that's why i have the compressor there so this is just on the standard platinum digital section and I'll have this threshold fairly high so it's just just clamping down on any stray peaks. So this is just on an overall level if anything tends to kind of get above the uh, the point that I want it to be at. Typically it won't but this is kind of just a safety net and the ratio is fairly fairly low 2 to 1. But this is the one that I'm really using the makeup gain. So here I'm just adding another dB of overall level. I could do this with a game plugin, I could do it with a fader, I could do it with a lot of things, but to me this kind of solves two problems. It means that I can bring up or bring down the overall level of the entire podcast. And then it also means that I can kind of level stuff off a little bit. It means that if there's any music, then that may be caught by the compressor. And compression here is just about catching the peaks and gently kind of shaving off and gently kind of sandpapering the whole thing and just making it a little bit more, a little bit more listenable. So there's something very important here that I haven't discussed that is in the template and this is to do with side chains and with music. So if I just go to a section that has music in it right at the end for example, then we can see that the music comes in before the actual episode has finished. So this is the music just down here and this is the, the voices in the episode. But even though I've got a fade in here, occasionally the music can kind of get in the way of the voices and we want to apply a way that can affect the music but only when the voices are present. And this is how we can use a, a sidechain compressor. Now let's take a look at exactly how I've got this set up. If I just come into my mixer for a moment, you'll see that Ian, Mike and the Patreon break message, which is just kind of a voiceover, are all going into a bus. Now on this computer it's called drums because I tend to do music on this computer and edit podcasts on my laptop, but it doesn't matter what it's called, it's just bus one. So bus one is coming over to music SC, so that's music sidechain. So whenever there's a voice present, it's essentially coming through that bus. There's, there's some audio there. So this music sidechain, very, very importantly, has got no output. So I'm not actually sending this to an output at all. The only place that this is going is to the sidechain of this compressor on the music channel. So let's just go through that one more time. We've got all the voices going to ascend, and this is just going at unity at 0 dB. And then that is going into the music sidechain bus here. There's no output, so it's not actually coming out the main output. The only place that's feeding is this compressor here. And you'll see in the sidechain, it's at bus 1. So for example, if I were to just shrink this down a touch and just mute the voice tracks, you'll hear some music, but you won't see any compression taking place at all. Okay, no compression, because there's no voice. 
The sidechain is telling the compressor to only compress when there's something coming in the sidechain. And the sidechain is set up to bus one. The voices are going to bus one, but there's no voices, so there's no compression. As soon as I bring on these voices, we're going to see some compression take place. Mike, with all my heart, that's what I say. So what's happening here is that we're achieving a, a ducking effect. We're making the music just duck out the way when the voice is present. And if we hear this actually without the compressor, we'll hear how it just kind of gets in the way and the voices aren't heard as much as they really need to be. Mike, with all my heart, that's what I... It's just getting in the way. As soon as we turn that compressor on and go back to the same section. Mike, with all my heart, that's what I say we can just hear it. And this is a great way at intros and outros and even mid-section breaks if you've got an advert or something like that, just to get the music out of the way for the voice at a certain point. And the release is kind of a little bit longer than it was on the original compressor tracks on the voices because I want this to be a gentle ramp up. If I had this too quick, then it would be too obvious, too spiky, and it would really come up quickly. That's not what I want. I just want it to be a gentle release. But I said that I haven't got this going out of an output, and the reason for that is because it's going to that send, if I were to have this coming out of an output, then I would hear that audio as well. We would have it kind of twice as loud. Let's just send this to an output and we'll hear. Let's take a listen to it before. Mike, with all my heart. Okay, and then let's send this to the, uh, the main output. Mike, with all my heart it's basically twice as loud. So I'm only using that bus as a sidechain key input. I'm not using it to actually come out of the main speakers, out of the main output or anything like that. It's just achieving that compression on the music so the music can duck out the way when the voice is present. That's how I tend to approach podcasts. There's two things that I've really got in mind when I'm working on these voices. I want them to be leveled, and that's what the compressor is doing, and I want them to sound bass heavy and like the person is sitting right next to you, but too much bass in that kind of low mid area can get kind of a bit fuzzy and kind of a little bit blobby, so we're just notching that out. I'm putting the EQ before the compressor because I like to have the low end come up and then be brought down with everything else. To me, a compressed low end with a podcast voice sounds much better than a version that has the compressor before the EQ. But in this template, you can switch things around. You can try it out for yourself and see what works for you. So if you've enjoyed this, there's a couple more videos that you can check out on my channel about podcasts. The first is to do with Isotope RX, and this is how to clean up podcasts. If you've used RX, you'll know how much of a powerhouse it is and how you can really get the most out of the audio before you even bring it into your door. You can check that out at the top. And then also the one I mentioned earlier, this is some tips for getting the most out of your podcast editing process within Logic Pro, how to edit podcasts faster, how to edit them more efficiently, and to get the most out of your editing process. Check it out up there as well. I hope it's been helpful. I'll see you again soon. Take care.